Sometimes New York City is called a melting pot, sometimes a gorgeous mosaic. But it's a pot that doesn't quite melt because the city's ethnic neighborhoods remain very distinct, very vital, like the immigrants who settled them long ago or only recently. In her continuing series, Roz Abrams reports on how immigrants then and now are changing New York City's landscape. Roz? Bill, in the 1980s, immigrants from the Dominican Republic were the largest group of newcomers to New York City. But many lacked the language and the skills necessary to get jobs in today's highly competitive workplace. The demands of those new jobs is one challenge that sharply differentiates immigrants then and now. These bold paintings are the work of an artist who immigrated to New York City from the Dominican Republic during the mid-80s. After years of hard work, Herman Perez is making a name for himself in the competitive New York art world. But Perez laments the fact that this experience is foreign to many other immigrants. They are insulated in the, in the, in the society. They live in Washington Heights. Sometimes they don't know Soho. Or sometimes the most of them don't know another place, just his house and the work. It is similar to how Italians lived in their own neighborhoods on the Lower East Side in Greenwich Village at the turn of the century. The majority of Germans settled on the Upper East Side. And the Chinese built their enclave below Canal Street. More than 40,000 Dominicans live in Washington Heights. Like so many immigrants before them, they opened shops and businesses and brought goods and services into areas in decline. Washington Heights, which 10 years ago was half dead. Today you walk the streets of Washington Heights, you see how many stores there are open, functioning. You see live, liveliness. Guillermo Linares is New York City's first Dominican-born city councilman. When immigrants come to this country, they come looking and seeking opportunities that are not available to them back where they came from. And so to them it's like the, the, the opportunity of their lifetime. But sometimes those opportunities, the jobs, the education, mastering the language, don't materialize. Beat cops in Washington Heights say for some young Dominicans, when they can't buy into the system, they resort to selling crack and cocaine. Well, there's no jobs out here, that's the problem. And like, they don't speak no English or anything, so they had no other way to do it. Make three, four dollars an hour, and do drug dealing, you make a five hundred dollars a week, clean. Crime is common to all immigrant groups, present and past. What has changed are the legitimate opportunities available for newly arrived immigrants. You had a strong back. This society had enough for you to do to be successful. You didn't have to be proficient in language. You didn't have to be fast forward in terms of technology. A recently arrived immigrant, however, today has a totally different universe to contend with. The challenge to educate new immigrants lies with Tony Amato, who must fight for resources for an often forgotten group. Where does America have the poorest educational systems in terms of how much money goes into it and in terms of what the educational levels are? Consistently, and this can't be a mistake, this can't be some fluke of nature, consistently it happens to be in the poor neighborhoods that are filled with immigrants. One notable exception is the Mott Hall School, a learning oasis for gifted and talented children. And many of these kids' parents immigrated here in the 60s and 70s. Mott Hall, a public school, raises additional money to train tomorrow's artists, scientists, mathematicians, and leaders. We're looking at the total child. We're looking at what society needs in order for this great country of ours to, uh, to prosper. New York City's Department of Planning says that by the year 2000, one half of the city's population will have been born outside of the United States. Tomorrow at 6, immigrants who flocked to New York almost a century ago received very little help from the government, but that is not the case today, at least for some immigrants. That's tomorrow on Eyewitness News at 6. Yeah,